Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, you guys are not going to believe this. Something completely unexpected has happened. NVIDIA, and I can't believe I'm about to say this, NVIDIA's being dodgy. Yeah, I know, what a way to start 2022 with something so unexpected and shocking. Get this right, NVIDIA's releasing a new graphics card today. Well, it's sort of new, upgraded might be a better term, but whatever you want to call it, there is a new version of the RTX 3080 hitting shelves today. Now, for those of you who've been trying to purchase an RTX 3080 for the past two years or so, at anything that kind of resembles a reasonable price, you'll probably raise an eyebrow to get another new product using the same Geo 102 silicon especially a more expensive product. And while that's somewhat of an issue, it is the least of our concern right now. The real issue being that the new GeForce RTX 3080 12 gigabyte graphics card goes on sale today, and you're unlikely to find a single review anywhere informing you in regards to how it performs. And this is because Nvidia has deliberately blocked all day one reviews for this product. Now, it's hard to say exactly why they've decided to do this. It's certainly very dodgy and anti-consumer, and as far as we can tell, it makes very little sense, though we do have a theory. But before I get into that, let's rewind a bit and give you some behind the scenes info. So four weeks ago now, AIB partners started to reach out informing us of multiple product releases in January, one of which was of course the new version of the RTX 3080 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. At the time I was presented with a pretty typical NDA to sign, which would ensure that we were provided with a sample prior to the public release, so we could let you know ahead of time, or at least as these things went on sale, what you could expect. So pretty standard stuff there. Of course, I signed the NDA because it in no way prohibits us from crapping all over the product if necessary. And you guys have seen us do that to countless products from many different brands in the past. Now, I was at the time told that we would have samples in hand about a week prior to the product release. And again, that's pretty standard. In fact, it's often a best case scenario. And MSI did manage to get us their massive Supreme X version a week before release, so we were on track to deliver you a detailed review today. But after spending three back-to-back -back days of nothing but benchmarking to update our results for previously released products, I reached out to NVIDIA on the 5th of January to find out when the review driver would become available. I was promptly informed that they would get back to me with that info. Two days later, I'd heard nothing, and it was now Friday the 7th, so just four days before the release, if you included the weekend, which we had to. So I reached out again, and at that point, NVIDIA informed me that there wouldn't be a review driver. Instead, reviewers would have to wait until the product was released to the public, at which point they could just download the public release driver and use that. This means no day one reviews, and in fact, it's likely gonna be a few days before the first detail reviews appear online. And this caught us and NVIDIA's partners completely off guard as we were all expecting to provide you with day one content. For us personally, this isn't really an issue. Deadlines really suck to be honest, and I really enjoy getting to spend the weekend with my family, opposed to working long hours on an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte review. So in that sense, I'm not at all upset. But I am annoyed at how unnecessary and, as I've said, dodgy this move by NVIDIA is. At this point, it's worth noting that without the supporting driver, it is impossible to test the graphics card and existing drivers don't work, at least not without being modified, which for a new GPU configuration is likely a very complex process. For NVIDIA though, it's very easy for them to provide the driver ahead of time and this is something they normally do. The truth is, the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte shouldn't have any surprises for us. It's got a few extra cores and some extra memory bandwidth slash capacity, which in terms of performance should land at somewhere between the original RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti. So then, why the NVIDIA shenanigans? Apart from the fact that NVIDIA has a long and well-documented history of anti-consumer shenanigans. I believe it's because NVIDIA knows this release will receive mostly negative feedback from reviewers, especially those that were hard on the pointless 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti, which was most credible reviewers. Now, you might be thinking, come on, as if NVIDIA cares right now, they can quite literally release anything and gamers slash scalpers slash miners will snap it up in a heartbeat. And while the latter is true, I believe NVIDIA really does care. It's been my experience over the last decade that NVIDIA is extremely sensitive to criticism, and this has been particularly evident since the release of Turing. So a flood of mostly negative GeForce reviews, all hitting the internet at the same time, 
would be something Nvidia wishes to avoid, even in the current market. So then, why might RTX 3080 12GB reviews be negative? And of course, keep in mind that at this point in time, even as the video goes live, I'm yet to actually use the card that I've had on hand for a week now, due to the lack of a supporting driver. In my opinion, this all boils down to pricing and availability. The GeForce RTX 3080, which was first released back in September of 2020, and was set to be the best GeForce release in years, ended up being a huge disappointment due to poor availability and sky-high prices. Then with loyal fans literally lined up to get their hands on one, Nvidia has done basically nothing to help them out over the past two years. And don't even bother telling me about LHR cards or direct sales, both of which were just marketing stunts, and the fact that Nvidia continued to segment GA102 with higher margin parts while mostly abandoning the RTX 3080 really does say it all, and the 12 gigabyte model is just a continuation of that same behavior. Rather than increase supply of the cheaper RTX 3080, which would eventually help drive prices down, Nvidia predictably went the other way by making a more expensive RTX 3080, after of course making an even more expensive RTX 3080 Ti. It's pretty simple really, the 12 gigabyte RTX 3080 release is no different to that of the RTX 3080 Ti. Nvidia's looking to maximize profits, but now it seems they wanna have their cake and eat it too. And by that I mean they wanna screw over their customers by as much as the market will allow, while receiving as little blowback from media as possible. Like the RTX 3080 Ti, the 12 gigabyte RTX 3080 is a price reset for GA102, Charging $700 for the RTX 3080 Silicon was a mistake as far as Nvidia is concerned, and bumping the MSRP up to just over 70% with the RTX 3080 Ti was the first step in correcting that mistake. Recently, they very quietly revived the RTX 2060 with a 12 gigabyte model, again, no reviews and perhaps more concerning, no MSRP, allowing Nvidia to dynamically adjust pricing based on what the market will bear, and I hate to say it, but I think they're going with the same plan for the 12 gigabyte 3080. When asked just days before the release what the expected MSRP will be, Nvidia promptly replied with, we don't have anything to announce at this time, and didn't let me know or give any indication as to when they would have something to announce, suggesting to me that we might not get an MSRP at all, or at best case, it's gonna be something like $1,000 US plus. At this point, it really should be obvious to everyone that these companies don't care about gamers, or more specifically, their own customers, whether it be Nvidia, AMD, or Intel. They just never have, and they really only care about profits. So, shocker, I know. But the way some people behave, defending the likes of Nvidia at every turn, you'd think these companies exist only to please them. Nvidia deserves all the negative press that should come their way over this move to delay and even suppress reviews. At the end of the day, it's not just dodgy and anti-consumer, it's just stupid. Maybe due to arrogance, I'm really not sure, but I'm sure by trying to minimize media coverage, they've only managed to amplify negative coverage. I should also make it clear that Nvidia's okay with reviews, they've allowed their partners to sample the card after all, but they specifically only want those reviews out after consumers can buy them. So they're not blocking reviews entirely, they wanna delay that content until after their own announcement and release to control the story, while also making it seem like they're playing nice with reviewers. Additionally, I should note that we don't believe reviewers deserve pre-release access to products, and for many other companies, there are no pre-release reviews, but it's specifically the change in process for this product that we believe is dodgy. Customers are used to seeing reviews before or on the release date, and that process is being deliberately altered just for this product to stop that happening. I'd also like to emphasize that this isn't about review samples. We obviously have those, and even if we weren't provided with review samples, we can, well, we can go out and buy them ourselves if we need to, and we have plenty of contacts within the industry that will help us get product quite quickly. Really, this is about Nvidia doing consumers dirty by suppressing third-party reviews. Definitely not something we like to see. So we've done our bit by bringing this story to light. Now it's really on you guys, the enthusiast community, to push back. And of course, you guys have done a great job pushing back when we've produced stories where AMD's ending chipset support, Intel's being dodgy with paid benchmarks, and well, Nvidia's tried to blacklist us in the past, and that was quite short-lived. So anyway, that's 
that's the behind the scenes of what's happened to this point and why you're not actually seeing a review of this product right now, which is obviously something that we would much rather have done today. Right now, this I don't like making these kind of videos. They seem a bit pointless, but also they do have a purpose. And yeah, if I was given my way, I would have spent the last three, four days benchmarking this thing to let you guys know all about it. But for whatever reason, NVIDIA didn't want that to happen. So that's really the end of this video. I will have a detailed review on this card in a couple of days time. So make sure you are subscribed for that. And if you'd like to support the Hubbard Unbox channel, uh, if you appreciate our independent reviews and all that sort of stuff, then yeah, we have Floatplane or Patreon. You can sign up there and you'll get stuff like access to our monthly live streams that Tim and myself do. We answer your questions. Very transparent there. Our Discord server. We have behind the scenes content, Q and A's, a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, if you're interested, Floatplane or Patreon. But if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.